Welcome and thank you for staying with KTN Farmers TV. I'm Philip Keitan and this is This Week in Agriculture. Today I'm joined by Chris Shimba who will help us in analyzing some of the stories that made headlines this week. Chris, please tell us a little bit about yourself. Thank you, Philip. Uh, as you rightly mentioned, my name is Chris Shimba. I work for Kenya Markets Trust as a policy and research analyst. Okay. In uh, Kenya Markets Trust, um, Kenya Markets Trust is an NGO, a uh, Kenyan NGO, where we focus on three main sectors, that is livestock, agricultural inputs, and water sector. Okay. And basically what we look into is to look at, we focus on the value chain, because we believe that value chain analysis is the only way through which we can be able to create wealth. But we focus more on the bottom of the pyramid. We look at the farmers, but our main focus is to be able to make the markets to be more inclusive, competitive, and sustainable. So through that, we now use what we call a facilitation approach, where we do indirect implementation. Okay, Chris. Thank okay, thank you very much. Let's now look at our first story, Chris, and then we'll, we'll have a conversation. A survey by the Kenya Market Trust has shown that Kenya remains a net importer of beef and leather products despite sector reforms. The survey focuses on political and economic context in which livestock is produced and marketed in Kenya. Our report Hilda Kibet attended the launch and files the following report. The Kenya Markets Trust has released findings of a survey that was conducted across five counties in the arid and semi-arid regions where livestock production and marketing are predominant economic activities. The survey focused on the political context in which livestock is produced and livestock products, which include beef, hides and skin, are marketed in Kenya. Some of the very key specific objectives that we worked on was to look at the political and the economic system of the livestock sector, we looked at the main actors, the institutions, and the decision-making process within the livestock sector, uh, starting from the livestock production, route to market, the marketing, and across the value chains. And then we also worked on investigating the economic relevance of the livestock sector. Among the key highlights from the findings were that there is poor coordination between the national government and the county government, multiple taxation when moving livestock from one county to another, a long value chain which leads to high price for the consumer and low returns for the farmer, weak regulatory frameworks and low levels of awareness among farmers in these regions. Coordination between the national government and the county government but even beyond that, even within the national government itself, there is weak coordination. There are certain functions of the livestock that actually are lying with the Ministry of Health and those that lie with the Ministry of Agriculture, Livestock, Fisheries and Irrigation. So then that coordination becomes very difficult. But even the counties and the national government, they have a weak coordination where some of the functions, yes, agriculture is devolved, but there are certain functions that the counties really do not have the capacity to be able to perform. But the counties feel that, you know, the national government is uh, overstepping their mandate. But the national government also feels that they have a responsibility to address some of them. For example, outbreak of diseases. We also found that there is also multiple taxation. So if I'm moving with my livestock from uh, Wajia, I'm coming all the way from, uh, from Wajia to Nairobi, then you will find different counties are going to charge me under different prices. Uh, this is in terms of taxes. So as I move up to the point where I reach Nairobi, then you find the cost of the animal has actually gone up. So the consumer suffers on this end, but on the other end, you will also realize the farmer that also has worked very hard to produce this animal will be paid less because the trader says, you know what, I am going to incur other costs as I move along the way. The survey also revealed that the illiteracy levels among livestock keepers is high with 38% of the respondents having not gone through primary education. Livestock keepers and also the traders, actually they do not have the knowledge of some of the rules, the standards that guide the livestock sector. So as much as they are players in that sector, but they don't have a clear knowledge of the rules. So at the end of the day, what happens is they are only uh, using those rules and laws that guide them, that they know, for example, the permits, the charges that they pay, so that is a big challenge. But I also need to mention that uh, one, of the, one of the other findings that we saw that despite quite a number of the people that we interviewed having experience of between 10 years, 1 to 10 years, but there is a problem with the, peop the traders and the livestock keepers because 38% of them actually had no education. 
So that is amazing because then it means that those who are keeping the livestock are actually people who have no education. But education is very key in understanding some of the laws, in doing some of the practices that enhances productivity. Speaking during the launch, Dr. Chris Wanga from the Department of Livestock in the Ministry of Agriculture acknowledged that the study was an important piece of the puzzle and will inform policy decisions in the livestock sector. This study is really going to help us as government to look in inward and address the challenges that face the livestock industry because it's been done by an independent party and we hope that all the stakeholders will benefit from it by applying the proposed remedial measures that are relevant to their various areas of interest. The livestock sector contributes 40% to the agricultural GDP, with over 10 million Kenyans relying directly or indirectly from livestock farming. The survey has started a conversation between policymakers and stakeholders in the sector, which will hopefully transform the lives of pastoral communities. Reporting for KTN Farmers TV, I'm Hilda Kibet. Chris, the report was your baby. Yes. Maybe you tell us what informed the decision to do the report in the first place. As you already mentioned, we looked at the politics and the economics of the livestock sector. And the motivation behind, behind this was, uh, is, was because of the increasing demand for meat and other uh, livestock products. And then we are also looking at the important contribution of the livestock sector in terms of what to GDP, to employment, the livelihoods that it supports, and also the linkages between livestock sector and other sectors of economy. And so because of the important role that it plays in terms of these linkages and also as a foreign exchange earner and the potential it has to raise the livelihood of the people, majorly the pastoralists and income levels of the lower level of CADA, we thought that it was important to see why then can we not, why then can we not enhance the livestock sector despite the reforms that are being done. So what are the politics and the economics at play in the livestock sector? And so, so what were some of the findings that you, you, you found in, in your research? Very interesting findings. If you look at uh, what this study aimed to achieve, one of the key things that we found is that there is very limited uh, allocation, budget, budgetary allocation by counties to the livestock sector. Uh, Malabo declaration uh, really demands that at least the government, the national government should give about 10% of, of the national budget to agriculture. But it was interesting to note that even down at the county levels, some of the counties actually, uh, their mainstay is livestock, but their allocation to the livestock is quite low. So that was amazing to us. So there is very low budgetary allocation, 5.81. Uh, I think it was uh, Turkana that uh, gave more, you know, uh, it, Iwajia, sorry, that gave more about 7.81 of the total budget. That was one. The, the other finding that we found is what we are calling multiple taxation. So as you move with your products from one point to another, then farmers, the traders, they are exposed to multiple taxation. So you will find, I move from my livestock to from Wajia, I pay taxes in Wajia, I get to Garissa, I pay taxes in Garissa, I get to Isiolo, I pay taxes in Isiolo. But beyond that, the taxes are quite different. So there is no predictability. So you really cannot understand what, how much is expected of me as I get to Garissa. Uh, so that was also another finding. Another finding that we found that you see, these livestock keepers and the traders, who are the main players in the livestock sector, actually they have a very limited level of education. For example, 38% of those who are participating in the livestock sector are actually with no education at all. And uh, you know, that is amazing because you know, there are many other things that are involved in livestock sector, including disease control and a number of many other things that really requires you to have some little education. If you are to improve productivity, then that comes into play. So that was also a concern to us. Chris, what were some of the recommendations that uh, the report has? Uh, some of the recommendations, for example, I didn't mention about the climatic changes that are also affecting the livestock, the pastoralism system, whereby you find, you know, the pastoralist kind of behavior of moving with animal from one point to another. So then when, you know, it, diseases come or an outbreak comes, it's very difficult to control. So just looking at that, one strong recommendation that this study uh, puts forward is the need to be able to keep few but quality animals. Because then if you keep few but quality animals, then you can be assured of productivity, 
you can be assured of management, you can be able to manage them in a better way, following all the principles and the practices that are required in terms of taking care of the livestock. Uh, the, other, the other recommendation that we found with, that we would want to give, also as we looked through this, there are abattoirs that are coming up, the infrastructure is quite a challenge to many of the counties and many of the pastoralists, how the animals move from one point to another is a challenge because of the bad roads and they are not able to be, to be fed properly. So to be able to address that, there is need for key stakeholders, especially development partners, to come forward and be able to support in terms of the infrastructure development. It is also important that the main focus of the county and the national government is to be able to improve the livelihoods of these people so that there are no, you know, no fights, but it is more about the coordinated role. The objective is achieved. Uh, we mentioned earlier that this report shows that quite a number of the traders do not have any formal education. While we don't recommend that they go back to school because perhaps their age may not allow them, but it will be an interesting bit to be able to give them some of the necessary training skills so that they can be able to have some of the you know, management skills on how to manage the animals, some of the diseases that may not require the public health officers. The extension officers are also quite few in the pastoralist areas. So then they can be able really to manage some of those things and produce quality, but few quality animals. Okay. So that will be very important. Okay. Yes. I, I totally agree with you. Um, yes, they may not be able to go back to school, but they can be given some little training here and there. And I am sure this, we can keep on on this report until there's a lot of findings that you came up with. Yes, but uh, we don't have enough time for today. Maybe we'll, we'll pick it next time. Let's just look at the, our next story and then we, we, we move on. Farmers in Wasingishu County have been encouraged to start beekeeping as a way of boosting their livelihood. Speaking while distributing beehives to farmers in Ainapkoi, the county director in charge of agriculture, Samuel Diego, noted that apiculture is one of the county's initiatives that aims at empowering the farmers. With a conversation on crop diversification at its peak in Wasingishu County, farmers have been encouraged to embrace beekeeping not only for subsistence use, but for commercial purposes as well. Speaking while handing over beehives to farmers in Ainabkoi Ward, the county executive member for agriculture, Samuel Yego, revealed that apiculture is one of the county's initiatives that is aimed at empowering farmers. Yego continues to say that his county was only distributing hives to farmers who are registered in cooperatives. We are meeting farmer groups who have come together and have registered uh, through our department of cooperatives and we are supporting them do apiary, beekeeping. Today we are giving them 18 beehives, part of it as lungs throat and the other one is skin atop. Uh, we are encouraging them to diversify so that at least we have various foods and also various economic enterprises across to them. So we are encouraging them what they get. They make good use of them so that they can be able to multiply and make an economic income out of it. While receiving the hives, the farmers lauded the various county initiatives that have so far been launched as talks on crop diversification continue. Kwa siku ya leo tunafuraa sana, eh, tunashukuru eh, serikali letu la county ya washingishu kwa mana eh, tumetunukiwa na tumekumbukwa kama kikundi ambaye nafanya bidi na tumepatiwa misinga. Yeah, tutaenda kuhifadhi na kuchunga vizuri na eh, hii eh, mrathi itasaidia kikundi chetu sana. Tutapata vyakula, hata kama tusipopata eh, market, sisi tutafaidi sisi wenyewe, watoto wetu watakuwa kipata asali na hata sisi wenyewe tutafaidika. Tunaona ikiwa ngumu sana vile tutakompiti kama bei ya production iko, iko juu. Na vile serikali ya uhuru kenyata inazingatia the big four agenda food security housing na nini lakini sisi kama watu ya group tumesema wacha tu, tuangalie upande ya food security na ndio unaona tunajaribu ku diversify vitu zile ambazo cost yake ni chini kwa mfano hizi nyuki tunapata sasa tunapofuga hizi nyuki ni pati ya chakula ni pati ya dawa na pie products yake tunaona tunaweza kuikuza Pia ningeza kushukuru sana kwa kaunti yetu kama kaunti ya wazingishu. Nyekieleza kutoka kwa governor wetu, 
ambaye alituma waziri wake ambao ni wakulima ambao waziri wetu wamekuwa pamoja na sisi tunashukuru sana kwa sababu ya kazi kama hii The farmers are farm to having received adequate training on beekeeping Kwanza kabisa walituita uh, tukaenda pale wakatu ongelesha kuzu kazi ambao wanataka wanapania kama county kufanya wakatueleza kwamba walita tu viongozi wakatufunza shortly alafu pia kuna extension officers ambao wamesema immediately baada ya sisi kwenda kuweka katika sehemu ambayo wametufundisha watakuja ili wakute kikundi chote cha wale uh, wanauzi kama uh, ni members wa hiyo vikundi mimi kama mtaalamu ya mifugo nimejaribu kufanya research ya hali ya nyuki sehemu ya baridi sehemu ya baridi kama hii ya washingishu hii ama keyo nyuki zenye ziko pande hii ni zile ambaye venom yake iko juu sana na ziko na asira sana ukienda sehemu ya ukambani ama the lowlands ambaye ziko joto huwa unapata zile nyuki ya huko sana sana ni zile docile nyingi hata zipigi mishale lakini bado iko na bado iko na nyuki ya hali ya juu asali lakini hizi zetu hii tunaomba kaunti ya washingisho sasa watusaidie upande ya kutufanyia research wakuja na zile nyuki ambazo zinatoa asali nyingi na pia sio hostile na sumu yake ama haipigi watu mishale hiyo ndio challenge tuko naye kama wafugaji ya nyuki kwa vile pia hizi nguo wametupa kwa ile leo siku ya leo wametupa msinga tumeshukuru kwa hiyo lakini tungeomba pia watusaidie na nguo za kufa wakati ya kutoa nyuki hizo na pia e, machine za kujaribu ku, ku refine hizi asali kwa vile ile style ambayo tunatumia ku refine hii asali ni style ya samani ambaye tunapata in the, in the process tunapata asali kama sio pia na pia tunapata ile wax kama sio pia so mimi nafikiria serikali ya kaunti na ikishirikiana na serikali ku wafanye utafiti wa tulete ile nyuki ambazo ziko ziko friendly kwa watu na zinatoa zinatoa asali nyingi reporting for farmers tv i'm jacqueline kemunto chris what is your take on this particular story uh, interesting i think beekeeping is one of the best uh, kind of farming that farmers can do because one it is complementary so you can do it together with other other farming that you are doing even when you plant trees you can also be able to keep bees it's also important to note that you know the market for bee uh, for 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 honey is actually immense because many people are now running away from sugar so you can be able to use you know honey as a supplement but also uh, beyond that we also find the importance of bee keeping because of the cross pollination so without bees for example we will not have productivity so when bees are also kept then you know there is also going to be productivity because they help also in pollination talking of pollination there was another um, story the other day that we are killing the bees ourselves in that uh, the use of greenhouses uh, these days they've introduced crops that don't flower what does this mean to crop production and you remember we, they say the world cannot survive without the bees what does this mean that shows that in the future we may have a very big challenge and is a good concern but i doubt whether the farmers and the common man understands really the value of bee in terms of pollination maybe quite a number of us just you know the interest is about the honey and once they have the honey that's all but they really don't care where this honey comes from and the focus is about the honey being the by product of bees but they don't look at it as also very important in the pollination of crops and uh, final uh, productivity so i think where we should start is to start from educating farmers on the value and the importance of bee and then as we are able to do that then we can also be able to teach them on how best then can we make sure that the bees are comfortable they are taken care of because what you see for example here in nairobi sometimes you see bee attack because they are looking for water they are looking for flowers but they can't find it anywhere so i think this is also important if we all understand the value of bees then we must also do something act on a way that will show that we care for them and we know their value okay yes. talking of the value of the bees i've seen in other countries they, they, there are some pesticides that have been banned but i've not seen the kenyan government banning the same pests now that they say these pesticides um, they don't select the the the, the pests that uh, they want to, to eliminate in the farm otherwise they kill everything yes. so and in most farm majority of uh, insects in the farm are always the bees so bees suffers a lot so what does this mean that 
there, there, there are pesticides that are being um, uh, banned in other countries, but here in Kenya you don't hear the government mentioning anything about the ban of the sale. I must also admit, even as I answer that, that I'm not an uh, agricultural specialist per se, but then for me how I look at it, you see, sometimes the use of pesticides in Kenya is not controlled. Because you see, farmers just know I have pests in my farm, I need to buy the pesticides. And then even sometimes the people that they buy from the pesticides really do not even teach them how to use that pesticide and even the side effects. Or even when, you know, some of them are labeled. But rarely, even me as a farmer, do I bother to look at what are the side effects of that pesticide. So you just take it, your worry is about the pests, you go spray, you don't care, but you see there is externality there. There are negative externalities. You use the pesticide for a good reason, yes, but it also had major impact on other things that they are, the effect may not be now, but the effect is going to be seen in the long term. And unfortunately, you also don't understand this uh, effect. So you need somebody really to educate you and to tell you. But because we have also subscribed to the international practices, it will also be very important for us really to understand which kind of pests, pesticides have been, uh, ha have been stopped in terms of usage in other countries and why have they been stopped and how does it also apply in the Kenyan context because perhaps they could be stopped in other countries uh, because of other reasons, not just because of the pollination, because of the bees and all that, but really if it's within the Kenyan context, it's applicable within the Kenyan context, then the expectation is also just that we also need to stop using them. But I find the major challenge is our farmers really do not know uh, or do not bother about the side effects of this pesticide. Okay. And do you think going forward, do you think our kids really know the value of the bees? Or do, you, do they even know where the honey comes from? Some know, some know, but some really do not know. Because you see, even as parents, uh, the good thing about uh, honey is that many times you see the bee drawn. But unfortunately, those children that are brought up in Nairobi, they are brought up in town, they have never seen bees. Or when they see bees, they only see them as enemies. So one of the things that I think we have a responsibility to do is also to understand our past, to understand where are we coming from, so that we also are able to teach our children about nature. Uh, bees, we need to tell them, you know, this honey that you take, it comes from the bees. And this is how bees look like. I will be very interested uh, uh, for lack of information I really do not know whether we have a center or, you know, we can have an attraction where we can be able to go visit beehives, people are able to see, so they see, okay, so this is how the bee looks like, this is how honey is being produced, this is the process through which it works, because then, by that then, we can be able to start appreciating. Otherwise, many of us are only interested in the byproducts, we are not interested in where it comes from, what we do, what, what, what kind of behaviors we, we exhibit that can be able to be harmful. We really don't care. Okay. Yeah. Thank you very much, Chris. You. Now we'll take a short break, but we'll be back shortly. <laughs>